So let's look at some typical systems and ask you what your balancing goals might be. So two ways and three ways? Yeah, I think you need to stop and think about what's happening over the last 25 or 30 years. We've gone from the old three-way valves where we just looked at constant flow to two-way valves to vary the flow. That means we're going to put the water where we need it. What does that mean to you? Let's look at a simple concept called diversity. And if you're going to balance the system, you best understand this, or how will you balance it? It's a real simple concept. And let's say we've got a central chill water plant with a dorm with a thousand ton load, cafeteria with a thousand ton, a library with a thousand ton, and a gym. So if you add up the individual loads, it's four thousand tons. But if you ran a, ran a block load, look at all those four buildings at any one time, and the peak block load of those four buildings is 3,000 tons. Now, by my definition, that's a diversity factor of 0.75. What that means is the kids can't be in one place at the time. So where are the kids? So you start looking at this, okay, each individual building might need 1,000 tons of cooling, but if I look at the whole campus at one time, all I need is 3,000 tons. So how many chillers are you going to put in? You're going to put in three, three, uh, three 1,000 ton chillers for 3,000 tons total, or four 1,000 tons for 4,000 tons total, and we're not going to play the old game of standby. So real simple, here's your question. Real simple little sketch, I like simple sketches. Uh, diversity is 0.75. How many chillers are you going to put in that plant? And how are you going to handle those peak loads? Now you've got to begin to think about balance. So, if I had three-way valves, the old constant flow, I'd have to have four chillers. I'd have to pump the 10 degree delta T, 9600 GPM, and pump the flow rate the same. I'd have the same flow rate all the time. If I went to two-way valves, I can put variable flow, only put the water where I need it and when I need it, and get away with three 1,000 ton chillers. And that's why two-way valves and energy wise have come into play. Here's the old-fashioned way, 30 years ago, constant flow, three-way valves, and you see the flow rate was 9,600 GPM, this chill plant. So if you're trying to balance this campus, it's 9,600 GPM. You've got 2,400 GPM in each dorm at a 10-degree delta T, 2.4 GPM per ton, and you've got constant flow. So you're going to give the dorms in the cafeteria, each building set, 2,400 GPM, whether they need it or not. So you're wasting a lot of water, and you've got to have those four chillers. Now, as soon as I go to two-way valves, I drop back to three chillers. I drop my main back from 20 to 18 inch. I drop my total flow rate back from 9,600 GPM to 7,200 GPM with two-way valves. Man, I'm saving a lot of first cost. I've got a lot of good energy savings going on. But now, how do you balance? You begin to get the point. The point is the total flow through the distribution is going to be 7,200 GPM. Yet you go to that dorm, you've got to set it up for 2,400 GPM. You've got to set up the cafeteria for 24, so you best know what you're doing here. Your total flow to distribution is only going to be 7,200, but you've got to be able to give each building 2,400. And that's what I mean by having a simple system sketch and understanding the intent of the engineer, understanding what you're trying to do. How else can you balance this? If you don't understand that, there's no way you could balance this. And this is why it's important you begin to take the system concept in mind and understand what it means to you. So if I start looking at system concepts, there's basically five basic systems available that you need to work with. And I think the fundamental building block has been primary secondary. We can play with it a little bit and talk about it. Let's just take a quick look at the various ones. Here's a traditional primary secondary piping setup constant flow through the tillers, the little green pipe is the coupler, and you see the secondary pump with two-way valves. Traditional, primary, secondary. Fine, good system. Here's primary, secondary, tertiary. And you see the little green common pipe at the chill loop, the green in each building. I get three sets of pumps, primary, secondary, tertiary, to take advantage of diversity. All I'm asking you to do is recognize your system. I'm not saying any of these systems any better than another one. On primary, secondary, tertiary, and this seminar is not intended to spend a lot of time on the subject except to tell you they're easy to balance everywhere there's a common pipe. Everywhere there's a bridge is easy to, is easy to balance, primary, secondary, primary, secondary, tertiary. These are some of the reasons or advantages you might want primary, secondary, which is another whole seminar we get into. The point of the day is you recognize what they are. Let's go a little step further. 
and make sure you understand. Here's a combination, primary, secondary, tertiary. And I say combination, look at the zones A. Zones A are closer buildings to the chiller plant, and there's no tertiary pump. Look at zone C. It's the furthest one out, and it don't have enough deferential pressure from the secondary pump to pump zone C, so we had to put a tertiary pump. We had to put another bridge out there. The point of this discussion is recognize a simple sketch is required for you to understand how to balance zone A, zone B, and zone C. Otherwise, you don't have a chance to balance that. And this would be called a primary, secondary, tertiary, kind of a hybrid. Here's a zoned pump. I got rid of the primary pump, and I've got an individual pump in each building pumping the distribution piping out, distribution piping back. This was called zone pumping or distributed pumping. If you go to ASHRAE book, you will see them in the journals and they're defined for you. I'm asking you, before you try to balance a building, to sit down and make this simple system sketch to know what the intent is of the design. Otherwise, there's no way you'll ever get this thing balanced properly. So, some zone pump comments, and again, the intent today is just let you understand what they are, not to try to go in detail about each one. Here's another picture of a good example of a zone pumping situation. And you kind of get the concept that each individual loop has its own pump to be balanced, which is entirely different than true primary secondary. So here's the comments again about good places for it. How about verbal primary flow systems? We get a lot of people talking about those today, where we've got one set of pumps pumping through the chillers, and all the distribution, verbal primary pumping. Same thing on hot water, same thing on chill water. Now your balancing issues are entirely different again. This shows two pumps in parallel, two pumps in parallel with a, with a pants leg connection between the two in this particular situation. And you see these pumps again are pumping through the chillers and all boilers, all the way out to the distribution pipe and to the very end. Again, make that simple system sketch if you're going to balance these so you understand. So if I kind of summarize, and this is important, very important, if you're going to be in the balancing business, you should be able to recognize these five basic systems and make a sketch before you set out to balance the job and know what TPM you need in each building and understand why. Primary pump we just talked about, primary secondary, and oh, by the way, primary secondary pumping is beginning to use verbal speed on the primary and verbal speed on the secondary. You're going to begin to see a lot of that coming. Uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, primary, secondary, tertiary hybrid, where you've got a little combination of both. It's important you catch that, that you see this. There's nothing wrong with that design. In fact, it's a good design where the, where the building is close to the chiller plant and may not need an extra pump. And then primary, secondary, zone pump, the distributed pump. So my message is learn these basic concepts, and if you're going to balance a job, you're going to be the, the guy in charge. You've got to know what's going on, and there's, these are the basic fundamental building blocks you're going to find for hydronics.